You're going to be working around gas here, so let's do a couple of basic precautions. One, you should be working on a cold motor that's had a chance to sit overnight and relieve pressure in the system. You should be working in a well-ventilated area away from any open flame or source of heat, including incandescent shop lights. You should have gloves on and, as always, be wearing your safety glasses. But most importantly, you should have the proper type of fire extinguisher handy and know how to use it. Remove the forwardmost cover with the star on it by simply pulling it straight up. Red arrows. Remove the two plastic air inlet connector tubes. They are friction fit and you can just pull them off. The top engine cover can be pulled straight up and off. There are four clips holding it on. Two by the vacuum regulators, yellow arrows and inserts left and right, and two hidden under the cover, red arrows. Remove the two rubber hoses connecting the vacuum regulators. The large hose pulls away from the rear of the regulators, green arrow, and the small hose pulls off the side connector with a Y connection on the passenger side, yellow arrows. Separate the electrical connector plug by the driver side vacuum regulator. Yellow arrow. Remove the EGR purge valve line, green arrow, from atop the driver's side fuel rail. It just unplugs from its connecting points. The red arrow shows the fuel supply line. Disconnect the two hoses from the driver's side valve cover to give you more room to work. They just pull straight back and off. Note, check these for cracks and be prepared to replace them. Remove the line from the valve cover on the passenger side. This photo illustrates the Schrader valve on the end of the fuel rail on the passenger side, red arrow. You can use this to drain fuel from the system and relieve pressure, but have some rags ready to catch the fuel that will come out. Note, you can also use this valve to test your fuel system's pressure. Using an E10 female Torx, you can now remove the four torque bolts holding the fuel rail and injectors to the intake manifold, as indicated by the green arrows. Pull the fuel rail and injectors up and out of their holes in the manifold, green arrows. Make sure you place a rag over the injector holes, yellow arrow, to stop anything from falling in. Remove the wiring harness from the injector, green arrow. Simply push in the wire on the two ends, red arrows, and pull the plug off. The injector is held onto the fuel rail by a small metal clip, green arrow. Pull or pry this clip off and wiggle the injector out of the rail. The injectors have two small O-rings that help hold and seal them both in the fuel rail and the manifold, red arrows. If you are experiencing a vacuum leak, it may be one of these O-rings. If you had severely leaking injectors, it's not a bad idea to pull the plugs and turn the engine over a few times to get the gas out of the cylinders. Remove the harness from the coils, green arrows, and the torque screws, yellow arrows, and pull the wires from the plugs. Next, you can remove the plugs. Remember, you need to have removed the fuel pump, fuse, or relay before you do this, otherwise you will just be squirting fuel in. Installation is the reverse of removal. Remember to put a little white lithium grease on the O-rings on the injectors to help seat them both in the fuel rail and the manifold. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.